So I'm Laura Bosworth. I am the CEO and co-founder of Tevito Bio Devices. We're using 3D bioprinting and living human cells to make breast reconstruction products. But I'm not going to talk about that right now. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about 3D printing um, and kind of where we're at. 3D printing, who's heard of it? Oh my god, there's somebody right there who's never heard of it. That's shocking. So 3D printing is funny because it's one of those things where, oh my god, it's the newest thing. Like suddenly, it's everywhere. But the reality is 3D printing has been around for decades, actually, predominantly used in manufacturing, um, doing rapid prototyping, which really means just early samples. Um, but it was very expensive. So th what the new news is, is that these 3D printers have become very inexpensive to make. And because of that, it's created access you know, to a whole community of people who didn't have that access before. And so what you can do now, and most of you know, you can download or design your own um, custom drawing, like a three-dimensional drawing, and you can put in the um, materials that you want. Usually for these low-cost ones, it's, a, it's some plastic materials. And people are doing toys, you know, cups, saucers, jewelry. I had a cool picture of a dress, like this 3D printed plastic dress and shoes. You know, for us women in the audience, jewelry, shoes, awesome. And, uh, and guns. What about guns? Let me tell you something about this. Um, about a year and a half ago, when I used to talk about 3D printing, mo about at least two-thirds of the people I talked to, they'd just look at me like, what? Um, after that guy here in Austin, yay, what a great city, um, printed the gun, everybody knew what I was talking about. Talk about the power of awareness and press, right? Very cool. Okay. What I want you to do now is, is imagine. Take, take a moment and remember your TV viewing days of Star Trek and, and go with me on a journey to the 24th century. How many of you all at least watched Star Trek? You don't have to admit if you're a Trekkie. Oh man, only half of you. Some of you aren't even gonna get my references. This guy had his hand up forever. He's like, Trekkie, I totally know. Don't correct me if I make a mistake on my Trekkie facts. Um, but, the replicator. The replicator in Star Trek, very cool concept. You walk up to the replicator and say, I need a replacement part for the uh, something. And there it was, you know? Um, very, very cool. It could make all kinds of inanimate objects, you know, replacement parts for your equipment on the Enterprise, so you could always keep it running. Scotty could, you know, get the warp core online faster. Um, clothing. In all types of inanimate objects. Hmm. What does that sound like? 3D printer? Anyone? Inanimate objects. We are there. <laughs> this is not 24th century technology. This is happening now. Because it's not just plastics, it's metals, it's all kinds of things. So replicator, inanimate objects, check. We're there. What else? What else could the replicator do? Well, the replicator can do food. So, 3D printers, can they do food? Interestingly, the answer is we're working on that. So there's a company right here in Texas that's been funded by NASA to work on 3D printing food in space. Does that sound like Star Trek? Um, and just this spring at South by Southwest, they demonstrated um, 3D printing of a pizza. <laughs> now, this is actually not too sophisticated, because if you think about dough, and you think about tomato sauce, and their cheese was like a cream cheese, and so you just put it in something and squeeze, you know, and there it was. But still, you gotta start somewhere. And, and uh, I've talked to the guy, they actually have some pretty sophisticated stuff that they are working on their labs. So, hmm, food, kind of interesting. But let me tell you about this company called Modern Meadow. Has anybody heard of them? Oh, good, I get to tell you something you don't know. They are using cow cells and pig cells, culture and growing those, and using 3D printers and creating pieces of meat that you would eat. So it's not ready yet. Uh, in fact, you can Google it, and you'll see Gabor Forjax actually eat one on stage. He fries it up. It looks like a worm. It's really kind of gross. Um, so they've got to do a lot of work to 
do electrical impulses and things like that to simulate muscle so it's got the right texture and the right taste. But still, like they're printing meat. I mean, how cool is that? Okay, so Star Trek replicator, 3D printers and food, eh, not quite there. We're not quite there. But I'd like to get to the meat of my discussion. Thank you, thank you for getting that. Uh, and talk about medical applications. So what about 3D printers and medical applications? In fact, 3D printers for at least 10 years have been used to create custom hearing aids. There's been over 10 million custom hearing aids made to fit perfectly for the patient for comfort. Um, now, if you think about it, that's just like printing a little bit of plastic, right? So that sort of still fits with our, our classic thing. But what about doing something that's more inhuman? That, you know, that's sort of separate. That's not a piece of human. Like, are we doing anything? In fact, all around the world in universities today, there's some super exciting things going on. Um, you know, speaking of ears, Cornell, about a year ago, was printing ears that, that could potentially, you know, I don't know how, how often an ear gets bitten off. You know, maybe Mike Tyson needed an update or something like that. Um, but they're doing ears, and there's a university in the UK that recently was printing a, a graft that could be used on the heart to potentially delay your need for a heart transplant. Um, another one is somebody's printing spinal inserts that is the, a replica of one of your discs that then they squirt some stem cells into that could potentially you know, help disc repair. And, and the list goes on and on. And so um, that's pretty exciting, but that's all still research. What about something that's actually in humans? So those are intended for human, but what's in humans today? Well, a year ago, the FDA approved um, a company named uh, Oxford Performance Materials is using a bone-like polymer to create craniofacial implants. So for people who have been through, say, an IED or a skull fracture, a terrible car accident, and they have to have their, their skull rebuilt, they can custom fit it. And so they're doing that today. Um, and the University of Michigan last year used materials that are, that are suture-like materials and custom printed a trachea and implanted it in a baby and saved that baby's life. Now, that's a one-off exemption. You know, they don't have approval from the FDA to do that all the time. Um, but they saved a baby's life with a 3D printed thing. So it's very exciting. So medical supplies, Star Trek replicator, check. We're doing it, right? But everyone here who's a Trekkie should know that, a, that the fact of the matter is replicators cannot work with living tissue. Right, my friend over there? Thank you. Thank you. Well-known fact. But, in fact, there's some exciting work happening today. And in university in China, they printed little miniature kidneys, truly functioning kidneys. And a company here in the U.S., Organovo, is printing miniature livers. Now, they're not, um, they're not ready for going into humans, so we're far from that. They'll probably use them for pharmaceutical drug testing. But it's very exciting. Their long-term goal is to create a whole organ, but it could be 20 to 50 years. Um, now, why does it matter? Why, why, why does it matter that, that we could do that? Well, today, about 120,000 people, Americans, are on the organ transplant list. And only about 5,000 procedures will be performed each year. So I think you know what that means. On average, about 18 people a day will die due to the lack of a shortage of, of these um, organs. So pulling together the concepts of bioprinting and tissue engineering and creating something has the opportunity to solve this issue of shortages with organs. But there are big challenges on the tissue engineering side. The bioprinting, printing is pretty sophisticated. But in tissue engineering, you've got to have the cells, and the cell has to know what it wants to do, and how is it a liver cell, um, and the functions are very, very sophisticated. And then beyond that, you have the challenge of 
how do you keep a large piece of tissue alive? Because it needs a flow of oxygen. And so it has to have a capillary structure to it. So these are some of the reasons that it could take you know, decades before we have organs that can be 3D printed. So how could we start? Um, what I would like to propose to you is that you have to find an application that has a large unmet need, a medical application, and that is relatively small, that you could solve it and it's relatively small. So you start with a small problem and kind of work your way up. I propose the first application should be a nipple. Because one in eight women will get breast cancer. And in many cases, the treatment includes the complete removal of all breast tissue. And unfortunately, reconstruction results are unpredictable and often very disappointing. And this can be terribly damaging to a woman's self-esteem. And at Tevito, what we're working on is using our 3D printers and fat cells and skin cells to recreate the nipple, which is the last step in reconstruction. And so really, fat cells and skin cells, they're not that sophisticated. You know, it's not like liver cells or kidney cells. And livers and kidneys, if you don't get it right, like, people die. Um, you know, fat cells and nipples, well, you don't die, right? So, so it's a great first, first application. We believe we have the opportunity to be the first 3D printed living cell product available on the market. So it's super, super exciting. So I hope what you can see is that it's, it's a cool journey. You compare us to the replicators, and we can produce inanimate objects. We can produce food soon, maybe. We can produce medical supplies. And, but we can't do living cells with the replicator. So in fact, we are much more advanced in that space. So I predict in the 21st century, the time of Star Trek, we will absolutely be printing functional organs. Thank you.